the Planko language. <laughs> it's good to finally meet you in person. I'm Bernard, although I insist you call me Bernie. The only person who calls me Bernard is my wife. <laughs> and even then, only when I've tracked elephant dung into the carpets. <laughs> As you know, I own several zoos, but I always like to show people the ropes here at my home. This is the first zoo I ever opened and a source of great pride for me. And prides, thanks to a lion breeding program we ran in the 80s. <laughs> but we're in the middle of a big renovation, and that's where you come in. Sadly, our old contractor had to retire after developing a fur allergy. Yeah, poor devil kept sneezing his dentures into the lion habitat. So it's up to you to finish everything off. Don't worry, though. I'm not completely throwing you into the deep end. My head keeper, Nancy Jones, will be lending a helping hand. Oh, she's a hard worker, and she'll expect you to be too. But I'm sure you'll get along like a house on fire, or even better, <laughs> one that isn't on fire. <laughs> Less shouting that way. <laughs> Hello there. From that rosy, fresh face of yours, I'm guessing you're Bernie's new hire. <laughs> Good. Now, I hope you're ready to ditch your diploma because we're about to get really hands-on. But before we begin the real work, how about we familiarize you with the zoo by learning how to fly around it and visiting some of our beautiful animals? We'll start by popping over and having a look-see at the grizzly bears in their habitat. Did you know that grizzly bears, also known as Ursus arctos horribilis, can hibernate for up to seven months a year? <laughs> oh, but then again, given the chance, I think a lot of people would do that too. <laughs> Select one of the bears and you'll bring up its information panel. This is where you can find out all kinds of information about your animal. The most important thing being its overall welfare. You'll learn more about animal welfare today as we go through your objectives. But for now, let's enjoy this magnificent animal. Why don't you select the camera from inside its information panel? See, now this is a fantastic way to get a close look at your animals. Okay, when you're ready, let's pop over to the other side of the zoo and take a look at the lions. I've marked their location for you to find. Panthera Leo Leo, or the West African lion to you and me. Lions are the most social of the big cats, and there can be as many as 40 lions in a pride, although prides of that size are pretty rare. As Bernie would say, those lions are awesome, which is precisely why I handle the training instead these days. Anyway, how about we get started on those objectives? Come on, let's head over to an empty habitat and see what needs doing there. As you can see, it's a lovely space for animals, but it's missing a certain something. Well, two somethings. 
warthogs. <laughs> so I'd like you to adopt a pair of them. To adopt animals, we need to open the animal market, which is in the animal trading section. There we are. A pair of perfectly splendid warthogs for our zoo. Just select them and choose Adopt. Normally, the animal exchange would be full of animals, but I've emptied out the market while you learn how it works. <laughs> the last thing I need is you accidentally ordering a dozen elephants. <laughs> when you adopt an animal, it's automatically placed in the trade centre where they're held until you're ready to move them into their habitat, which, as it happens, you are. So how about you move them into their new home? When you ask for an animal to be moved into a habitat, your caretakers will go to the trade centre, collect your animal and deliver them to your selected habitat. I've marked the trade centre's location, so let's go and watch the caretakers in action. Well, as you can see, those caretakers don't hang about. They'll move those animals to their destination as fast as possible. Of course, normally we'd have to place the animals into quarantine before moving them into a habitat, but I am assured by a person of good standing that these warthogs are in the very rudest of health. Right, let's get the warthogs' habitat finished up so we can keep them nice and happy. You see, each animal in the zoo has an overall welfare statistic, basically how happy they are, and that overall welfare statistic is itself comprised of four different areas. Nutrition, social health, habitat and enrichment. Luckily, if you select an animal, you'll bring up their animal welfare information panel, which we saw earlier, where you can see how they're doing. That way, you'll know exactly what areas need to be addressed. Don't worry if that's a lot to remember. You can always check the Zoopedia for more information. Let's start by making sure we're taking care of the warthog's nutrition welfare. To do this, we'll need to place a food station and a drinking station. Now, each animal requires a different type of feeding station. And for the warthogs, it's a small feeding trough. So let's add one of those and a water bowl. Animals also require stimulation to keep them happy. Let's add a lovely mud bath for the warthogs to roll around in. <laughs> that bath will count towards their enrichment welfare, specifically their toy enrichment welfare. Oh, nice work. You've got a knack for this, I see. Now, our contractor had to leave in a hurry, so this place is in a feral state. Unfinished thingamajigs and watsits all over the shop. But the first thing we need to finish is the ostrich habitat. It's over near the hippos. Oh, before we actually start building our ostrich habitat, let's pause time for a moment. Ah! That's more like it. A quick break. Sometimes it's a good idea to pause the game whilst you're doing something which requires your concentration, because it'll stop the zoo spinning out of control while you're looking the other way. Let's keep the game paused while we get this ostrich habitat built. OK, job number one here is to add a habitat gate before we complete the barrier. Every habitat needs a habitat gate. After all, how else would the keepers get in and out? <laughs> Just make sure it's hooked up to the path so the keepers can reach it. Right! Let's complete the perimeter barrier so we can adopt us some ostriches. I've marked out an area for you to use, so I'd like you to finish off the perimeter using the brick barrier.
Good work. Remember, before you can place animals in any habitat, it has to have a full loop of connected barrier. Now, you've probably noticed that guests can't actually see into this habitat at the moment. At least not without a stepladder. But seeing as they're banned, I'd like you to select a piece of barrier and swap out the brick for a glass barrier so the guests can see in. There we go. Adding in more windows gives guests even more opportunities to see the animals in a habitat. It's always best to make sure the guests can get a good view into a habitat from the path they're walking on, because it makes them happy. And because this would be a pretty terrible zoo if they couldn't. The last thing we need to do is to add a donation box. You see, when guests enjoy the view of an animal, they'll make a donation. Just make sure you put them in easy to reach places like near a viewing point. Donation boxes are one of the main sources of income for the zoo, so make sure you remember them. Now, before we adopt our ostriches, you should end pause time. After all, if time's paused, then so are our caretakers, which will make it a bit tricky for them to deliver the ostriches. <laughs> Oh, by the way, as well as pausing time, you can also speed it up. It'll run everything at two times and five times faster. It can be useful, especially if you're waiting for money to accumulate or for animals to be delivered to your habitat. <laughs> Personally, I use it when I'm waiting for a brew to finish. <laughs> All right, you've finished the habitat, so it's high time we adopted those ostriches, don't you think? Let's get four of them in here. While we wait for them to be collected by the caretakers and brought to the habitat, you should get it ready for them. Add a suitable feeding station, water station, and an appropriate food enrichment item. It's often best to place things like enrichments and feeding stations near to the habitat perimeter, so guests can get a really good view of the animals. Ostriches have somewhere they can really stretch their legs. Did you know they can actually run at 43 miles per hour? Oh, heaven forbid they ever escape. <laughs> the speed camera finds alone would bankrupt us. <laughs> well, Bernie certainly seems impressed. Did he do his speed camera joke? Every time we get an ostrich. So, now we've made the ostriches' lives a bit better, let's do the same for the keepers, shall we? To make it easier for the keepers to feed the ostriches and hippos, we should build a new keeper hut. Keeper huts are where the keepers prepare the food for animals, so they should be placed near to the habitats to make sure the keepers don't waste their time walking when they should be looking after the animals. You'll need to rotate the keeper hut to get it to connect up to the path. <laughs> this keeper hut only has space for one keeper, but the larger keeper hut can allow multiple keepers to prepare food at the same time. Oh, but bear in mind that keeper huts and other staff facilities shouldn't be placed near to areas where there are lots of guests. Guests don't like seeing facility buildings and it can affect their happiness. Negatively. <laughs> In case that wasn't clear. Something that all facilities, shops and a whole host of other objects need is power. And that obviously includes your newly built keeper hut. So let's place a transformer next to it, shall we? A 
lovely work. Now the keepers can start using the hut to prepare food, and thanks to where you've put it, they won't need to walk very far to deliver it to the ostriches and hippos. Let's get on to your next objective then. Bengal tigers. We want to adopt some, but I'm afraid there's nothing ready for them yet. Head on over to the plot of land I've marked out. It's not too far away. Righty, your next job is to build a habitat from scratch. <laughs> and concrete and glass, I expect. So go ahead and build it. Just make sure that the habitat includes that big hole we've dug. Oh, and don't forget to add a habitat gate to the barrier. Oh, and make sure the guests will be able to see the tigers. habitat is in place, don't forget to put down a donation box near to your viewing areas. We need every dollar we can get. <laughs> Especially as these tigers aren't exactly eating instant noodles for lunch. Okay, that's the habitat boundary complete, the habitat gate in place, and most importantly, the tigers won't be able to jump out of it anymore. I think it's time we adopted those tigers.
whilst our trusty caretakers collect and deliver the tigers, let's take a look at preparing the habitat for their arrival. We'll start with the basics. Add a suitable feeding station for them. This time, instead of adding a water bowl, let's try something different. Some animals need a pool in their habitat so they can go for a swim, but they can also use it to drink from. All you have to do is make sure the banks of the pool have a gentle slope so they can easily get a nice, refreshing drink. There's already a pool excavated, but you still need to fill it with water. You should do that by going into Terrain and selecting the Water Tool. Yes, that'll do nicely. Of course, just like the warthogs and ostriches, these tigers will also need some enrichment. Why don't you add some suitable toy and food enrichment items into their habitat? OK, it's really starting to take shape. Now, the tigers will need a shelter in their habitat so they can hide from the guests, or more likely the bad weather. Although, given that we're in England, you might want to think of that just as normal weather. <laughs> Go on, add a shelter to their habitat. You can either build one from various suitable bits and bobs, or if you like, just pop down the blueprint that I've already built for you. Poor Dabs. I'm sure it can't have escaped your attention that the tigers look a bit miffed. That's because they aren't too keen on the type of terrain in their habitat. Select a tiger and bring up its information panel. Rightio. Head over to the Terrain tab. That way you can view the terrain information and see how they feel about different types of terrain. That'll tell you what the tigers need more of or less of in this habitat. Okay then, open the Terrain Editing tool, select Painting, and give them some more soil. Yes, that should help with the habitat part of their welfare.
Right then, all animals need plants and trees from their own biome or continent. You know, deserts, savannas, or Asia, Europe, that sort of thing. It looks like these tigers need a few more plants in their habitat. To get a perfect fit, use plants from the rainforest and temperate biomes that are native to Asia. Although if you have to, you can get away with using just one or the other. The tigers will also want a certain amount of their habitat to be covered by those plants. To find out which plants to use and how many, select a tiger and go to the Environment tab. Now, as you can see, some of the plants currently in the habitat aren't quite right for the tiger, like the wattle bushes. You can remove them if you want. You can find all of the plants you need in the nature section, and you can use the filters to only show the types of plants you want to see. In this case, that's plants from the rainforest or temperate biomes. fences make good neighbors. I guess that's doubly true when one of the neighbors is a Bengal tiger. <laughs> Still, those tigers look so happy that I doubt they'd leave. 
even if you did poke a hole in their fence. <laughs> oh, but for heaven's sake, don't test that theory. Right, let's head over to the Indian peafowls. I've been told that we need to improve their social welfare. one of the peafowls and select them to open our information panel. Then we can have a good gander at how they're doing. Although technically, I suppose gandering would just be for geese. Expand their social welfare and we can get a bit more detail. Hmm. Now they've clearly got plenty of space and they're not stressed, but it looks like their social group isn't quite right. So let's find out more. Head over to the social tab to see what's wrong. Right, as you can see, the peafowls need their population to be larger. To solve this little problem, you'll need to adopt three more female peafowls. Off you pop to the animal market then. on those peafowls. I expect they'll be delivered soon. But sadly, it sounds like our snow leopard is a bit grumpy. Let's head over there and see what's wrong with her. Just like people, animals can suffer from stress if things aren't quite right. You know, like when you see someone put in the milk before the tea bag. <laughs> in the case of these snow leopards, they're a bit stressed by their lack of privacy. You can lower their stress levels by swapping out the normal glass barrier by their cave for one-way glass. It's not a cheap option, but I think they're worth the expense, don't you? This will give the snow leopard somewhere to go when they want to get away from the prying eyes of the guests. Of course, when an animal isn't in its natural biome, it's probably going to be too hot or too cold. Unsurprisingly for the snow leopards, it's... It's too hot, <laughs> even with the terrible British weather. You should help cool it down by adding some coolers to their habitat. But let's start by opening up the temperature heat map and having a look-see at the temperature in the leopard's habitat. As you can see, we already have one cooler in there. Let's pop some more down and get as much of the habitat as chilly as we can. Luckily for us, this habitat already has power, but you'll need to make sure of that in the future. Just so you know, if any part of a habitat is powered, then the whole habitat will be powered. You can find heat maps for all sorts of helpful things, so do be sure to explore them and make good use of them. It'll take a little while for the temperature to adjust once you've added coolers or heaters, but now we've got the coolers in, we can address the leopard's terrain welfare. You see, what the leopards really want in here is snow and rock, so let's make that happen. Thank you. 
of that should give you a pretty good understanding of how to make animals happy. So I'd like you to go and check on all the other animals in the zoo and fix up any issues with their habitats. That'll increase the average welfare of the animals across the whole zoo. And that average welfare is a very important statistic. Now, to quickly see how all your animals are doing in the zoo, you should head to the animal section of the zoo management screen. As you can see, this list shows you the animal's overall welfare. So if something's amiss, then you can quickly pop over to them using the locate tool. Right, I'm off for a cuppa while you make sure all the animals are well looked after.
think it's fair to say that you've passed the first part of your training with flying colours. There's still lots more to learn, but we'll have to head to another one of Bernie's zoos for that. If you want to grab your passport, we'll head off, shall we? Mmm, sounds like you've got the whole zoo purring away nicely. Well, purring, grunting, screaming, booming, <laughs> all the uh, appropriate noises. I guess I was right to hire you, huh? <laughs> hey, don't tell her I told you, but Nancy wasn't sure you'd even last the morning. <laughs> so, we're happy this is working out. And Nancy owes me a foxy coffee. <laughs> as strange as it seems, considering we just met, when I look at you, I feel like you're the child I never had. After the one I did have, obviously. But you see, zookeeping's not for my daughter. Don't get me wrong. Emma absolutely loves animals, but she set her sights somewhat higher. Mm hmm. Wants to save the entire planet. I'll just settle for saving a couple of species. Oh, and maybe having a type of frog named after me. Welcome to Madagascar. It's quite the change of scenery from dreary old England, huh? <laughs> Apart from the weather, I suppose. They don't call these places rainforest for nothing. <laughs> the zoo you'll be working in is an ape sanctuary where we're doing vitally important conservation work. Not just for apes, but for all kinds of species. But apes, well, apes are some of the closest relatives to humans there are. And yet, the way the world treats them is like well, very much like some of us treat our actual relatives. <laughs> anyway, that's why I'm determined that our operation here does some good. If we can all leave some part of the world in a better state than we found it, we'll have lived lives worth living. And speaking of states, I have a horrible feeling I left the house in a right one. <laughs> when I get back, I expect my life won't be worth living at all. <laughs> What do you think of Madagascar, then? Bit warm for my taste, to be honest. Anyway, this is Bernie's primate sanctuary. It's not just primates, though. We've got all sorts of animals. So why don't we go and have a look at some of them, eh? We'll start by taking a look at the red ruffed lemurs. They're the ones that look like they should be in a Shakespeare play. <laughs> Come on, let's head over to them. lemurs are found in the rainforests of Masuala, that's in northeast Madagascar. They can actually live anywhere from 15 up to 25 years. Fancy that, eh? OK, when you're ready, let's go find our Bornean orangutans. The Bornean orangutan is such a marvellous creature. They're always a big favourite at any zoo they feature in. And they're also the biggest tree-dwelling animal on the planet. 
Assuming you don't count any lions that got stuck up one. Oh, why don't you take a better look at them? Open up their information panel and go into the animal camera. Aren't they just incredible? When you're ready, let's go and have a look-see at some of our beautiful bonobos. <laughs> They're quite the characters. Oh, dear! It looks like we've arrived just in time. One of the habitat's barriers has collapsed. And wouldn't you know it, one of the bonobos has made a run for it. We'll need to catch them. But before we do, we should box up the other bonobos to stop them escaping too. Select the habitat boundary to bring up the habitat information panel. Good. Now open the animals tab. Box up the remaining bonobos with box all animals. Now, we'll need a vet to recapture that escaped bonobo. But it seems our last one left to do some research in the wild. Not an ideal situation. So, we'll need to hire a replacement, Sharpish. Go into the Staff tab of the browser. You can find all of your staff in here, but there's no time to go looking at their particulars at the moment. Hire a vet. Now, place the vet on one of your paths. <sighs> Great. Now, let's deal with our escapee before they can cause too much havoc. Use the animal alerts to jump to the escaped bonobo. Then press Call Vet to... Yep, you guessed it. Call the vet over to capture it. Oh. Oh, OK, that's the relief. <laughs> so while the vet deals with our bonobo friend, let's go fix up their habitat so they can't escape again. Head back over there. As you can see, the barrier's collapsed. Someone's taken their eye off the ball, obviously. Let's get this one replaced. Select the barrier and then we'll edit it. Delete the broken section of barrier and replace it with a brand spanking new one. Now that we've done that, we need to make sure to add climb-proof barriers to the top. That way the bonobos won't be able to climb out. Just make sure you've got the correct piece of barrier selected when you do that. So go into the options section and select which side the climb-proof barrier needs to go on. And don't get it wrong. <laughs> We're more worried about bonobos climbing out than guests climbing in. Nicely done. And I think it's high time we unbox those bonobos, wouldn't you say? <laughs> the poor mites will get sad if we leave them in there for too long. Select the habitat barrier to bring up the habitat information panel again. So, it turns out that as well as the old vet leaving, the zoo's mechanics did too. We'll need to hire a couple of new ones so we can help stop any more breakouts. You see, mechanics do all sorts of helpful things around the zoo, but one of their most important jobs is taking care of the habitat barriers. <laughs> Without mechanics around to repair them, the barriers will crack, crumble and fall down. And before you know it, we'll be overrun with escaped animals. Head into the Staff tab of the browser again. Hire a mechanic and then place them on a path to pop them into your zoo. 
You don't have to go back into the browser if you're hiring lots of the same type of staff member. Just place another one on the path right away. Oh, gosh, we have been busy, haven't we? Good work there. I'm off for a cuppa. Oh, I think Bernie wants a word with you. Oh, I hear you had a bit of an issue with an escape bonobo. The main thing is that you dealt with it swiftly. And more importantly, without the animals stealing someone's clothes, putting them on, and then walking out of the front gate. You see, another key responsibility for our vets is animal research. Researching animals allows vets to unlock new enrichment items, additional information for our education resources, enhanced breeding programs, and improvements to food quality. <laughs> <laughs> the animal's food, not the vet's. It'll take more than a research grant to improve the staff canteen. <laughs> anyway, as you can see, research is a key part of running your zoo. In order for a vet to undertake research, they require a research centre. <laughs> and once again, that's something that this zoo is missing. So let's build one. I've marked out an area for you to put it. Now, you've probably noticed that there's already a building where I want you to build the research centre. Don't worry. You see, the building that's currently there is actually a hollow shell, so we're able to place our new building inside of it. If you select the research centre for placement and then hover over the shell, you'll see that it asks if you want to add the research centre to the existing building. select the building to add it to it. Oh, but that won't place it just yet, though. First, we'll need to rotate our research centre so it automatically connects to the path when we place it. Splendid work! Now that we have a brand spanking new research centre, we can give our vet something to do in there. Oh, by the way, it's worth noting that the vets will only do research when they're not required to do any other jobs. That said, you can change what jobs a vet does via their information panel. But let's not worry about that just now. So, let's get our vet researching ring-tailed lemurs. Pop open the access menu, head into Zoom Management, then go to the vet research section. Here, you can see a list of all the animals present in your zoo, and also all the potential diseases that can occur. Now, assign your vet the ring-tailed lemur to start their research. Actually, thinking about it, 
I'm not sure we've got any education boards or speakers by the lemur's habitat. Let's head over there and add some, so our guests can learn all about the furry little delights. First off, let's pop down two education boards. Place them on the habitat barriers at a height that guests can see, or, if you like, pop them down on a stand. From the drop down list, select Ring Tailed Lemur. Although I'm sure that last part was obvious. When you link an education board or a speaker to an animal, you need to make sure that said animal is close by. If it isn't, the guests will get confused and won't learn as much. Okay, now that they've been put into position, we have to tell them what animal to display information about. Select one of the education boards to bring up its information panel. Okay, now that we've done the education boards, let's pop down a pair of speakers. Speakers play audio to the guests so they can learn while they look at the animals instead of having to go through the laborious process of reading. Oh, one thing to bear in mind is that it's important not to put the speakers too close together. If you do, the guests won't be able to understand what's being said. Fantastic! Oh, it's worth remembering that education boards and speakers both need power to work. They won't do much good without it. Oh, it looks as though our vet has completed their research on ring-tailed lemurs. We'll need to collect the results. Head back into the vet research area to take a look at their findings. Go on, collect your research rewards. Just so you know, vets will continue to research an animal even after successfully completing a research level. <laughs> I suppose when you're in the zone, you're in the zone. Well, now that we've enriched the lives of our guests, let's enrich the lives of our ring-tailed lemurs. Some animals, like lemurs, will have a climbing need. That means they have a requirement for a certain amount of climbing space. And you can fulfill that requirement by building them a climbing frame. Let's find out how much more climbing space our lemur friends need, shall we? Select one of them and bring up their information panel. Next, pop over to the Terrain tab. Ah, now, as you can see, the lemurs need quite a lot more climbing space. 
but as it happens, I've already got a climbing frame blueprint built for you. So you can either pop that down or build one yourself from scratch. By the way, it's not always just climbing needs that you have to worry about. Other animals might need a certain amount of water in their habitat so they can go for a swim. They certainly do keep us on our toes. Climbing frame for them. They're going to absolutely love it. Do you know what would make them even happier though? Nicer food. But that's true of all of us though, isn't it? You can unlock better quality food for animals through research. Luckily, we've already unlocked some for the lemurs, so all that remains is to make sure they get served it from now on. Let's bring up the habitat information panel by selecting the lemur habitat. Lovely. Now select the Animals tab. There we go. As you can see, we can set the food quality in here. Just open the drop-down menu and select Grade 2 Food Quality. Mm. Grade 2 Food Quality. My mouth's watering already. So, a new climbing frame and better food. Oh, you've really spoilt those lemurs rotten. <laughs> Now, I think it's time we looked at one of the zoo's most important responsibilities, releasing animals into the wild. You see, when we feel an animal is ready, we can release them into the wild. But what makes an animal a good candidate for release? Well, their age is an important factor. I mean, we can't release an animal that's a juvenile, just as we can't release one that's gotten too old. They'll also need to be fertile. After all, the idea is to repopulate the wild, so the best candidates will have a high fertility gene. And together, the age and fertility of a candidate will determine how many conservation credits we'll be rewarded when we release them. Now, conservation credits are vitally important. They're the lifeblood of your zoo, because earning them allows you to adopt even more animals. And what's more, the animals you can adopt will be of a higher quality. So, with that in mind, let's pop over to our orangutan habitat. I'd like you to find Agang, the Bornean orangutan, in the habitat and select him, please. You can go through each orangutan in turn or select the habitat barrier go to the Animals tab in the Habitat Information panel and find him in the Animals list. I know it's sad to see him go, but he'll be happy out in the wild. And he's a wonderful candidate for release. Young, strong and fertile. Excellent work there. You've definitely got potential, you know. Ah, I see you've been doing some homework. Although, it hardly seems like work when you're learning about something as adorable as a ring-tailed lemur. I imagine I'd have got much better grades at school if there'd been less algebra and more aldebra. Tortoises. Okay, so far we've done a lot of work with habitat animals, but now it's time to learn all about exhibit animals. Let's build a brand new exhibit. I've marked an area for our new exhibit. How about we head over there? Lovely. Now let's build a new exhibit in the gap that's been left. Just add it to the building like we did with the research centre earlier, then pop it into the gap. Perfect. 
The next thing to do is adopt an exhibit animal to go in there. How about a Gila monster? Open up the exhibit trading section and adopt one. Just as we do with habitat animals, we need to send the Gila monster to the exhibit. Select the exhibit to send it there. When you send an animal to an exhibit, it'll automatically be given the correct setup. But that doesn't mean it's completely ready for them. So let's finish it off. We'll start by adding some enrichment items. Head over to the exhibit's information panel. Good. Now open the layout tab. Oh, well, it looks like we've only got the enrichment level one items unlocked at the moment. Never mind, let's turn on at least one of them for the healer monster. As I'm sure you know by now, you can unlock more enrichment levels by having one of your vets do some research. Now, we'll also need to set the temperature and humidity in the exhibit. These are vitally important for keeping our healer monster happy and comfortable. Open the climate tab. Here, you can see the Gila monster's desired temperature and humidity. You can change both of these by adjusting the dials below. Make sure it's going to be nice and cosy. That's the ticket. And the last thing we need to look at is setting up the different windows. So open up the Windows tab. You can edit and customise any of the windows on an exhibit. A window can be closed and blank or have a two-dimensional background or even a three-dimensional background on it. Why don't you have a play around with the options? There's also an exhibit education board. Pop them down near exhibits to teach your guests about them. Let's add one now. Lovely stuff. Now our guests can learn all about our venomous friend here. Right, now, I've got a bit of a big job for you. I need you to increase the number of species in the zoo. You'll probably want to adopt both habitat and exhibit animals to do so, which will mean building plenty of new habitats and exhibits for them. Go on, off you pop. I'll check in with you when you're almost done. Wow! 
My, my, you have been busy, haven't you? Splendid! But now that you've adopted all these lovely new species, we need to make sure they're nice and happy. So let's get the average welfare across the zoo nice and high, shall we? And by we, I mean you. Go on, get to it!
Lovely job there. You should be proud of yourself. Not only have you expanded the zoo and kept the animals as happy as Lanny, but you didn't bankrupt us in the process. Amazing. Wow. Well, you've certainly transformed the zoo. I barely recognize it. A wonderful new exhibit, some fascinating new species, and you've done wonders for the animals' welfare by enriching their habitats. <laughs> Who doesn't love playing with a three-foot-wide soccer ball, huh? <laughs> I mean, other than professional soccer players. I mean, I'm sure it wasn't easy, though. I expect money was tighter than a possum's pouch. Plowing all those funds back into the welfare of the animals doesn't make running these places a picnic. Although, it does make me feel a little less guilty about how much our gift shops charge. <laughs> no, as far as I'm concerned, the only reason to run a zoo is to help animal kind. Sadly, it appears some other people have far less noble goals. Yep. 
Hey. <laughs> hey.